Today we're going to be talking about right triangle trigonometry. And a lot of this is review from geometry. So this slide right here should be review. We have angle A, okay? When we're talking about angle A, side BC is a side that's opposite to angle A. The hypotenuse is the longest side that's opposite of our right angle. And the side, one of the sides that makes up angle A that's not our hypotenuse is the side that's adjacent to A. So our six trig functions, and these three, sine, cosine, and tangent, should look familiar. Versus cosecant, secant, and cotangent, these are new. So sine, remember, is opposite over hypotenuse. Opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine of theta, that ratio, is adjacent over hypotenuse. And our tangent is opposite over adjacent. <clears throat> and hopefully your teacher last year gave you the mnemonic device of so ka toa. Okay, that's a mnemonic device to help you with remembering our common three. Now the reciprocal functions. What I usually do is I usually make a chart. Sine opposite of sine is cosine, is cosecant. Okay, because it's just the reciprocal, hypotenuse over opposite. Cosine, adjacent over hypotenuse, the reciprocal is secant. And for tangent, its reciprocal is cotangent. Now, how I remember which ones are reciprocals, each pairing has a co with it. Tangent and cotangent are paired together. Cosine gets paired with secant. And sine, since there's no co piece of sine, it gets paired with cosecant. Evaluate the six trigonometric functions for the angle theta shown in our right triangle. So this is theta. I need to find the hypotenuse. You could recognize this as a Pythagorean triple, but not a lot of guys remember that Pythagorean triple. So use your Pythagorean theorem to solve. 8 squared plus 15 squared equals c squared. So we end up getting c to be equal to 17. So I set up my chart, sine, and then right across from it, set up its reciprocal, cosecant. Cosine, its reciprocal, secant. and then tangent and cotangent. So sine, opposite over hypotenuse, 8 over 17. Its reciprocal is 17 over 8, cosecant. Cosine, 15 over 17, adjacent over the hypotenuse. Secant, the reciprocal of that. Tangent, opposite over adjacent, 8 over 15. Cotangents, the reciprocal of that, 15 over 8. So our next question, in a right triangle, angle A is acute, the tangent of A is equal to 5 over 3. Find the value of cosecant of A. So let's try out a right triangle because it tells me I have a right triangle. Let's label this angle down here A. Angle A, the opposite over the adjacent is 5 over 3. I don't need to solve for angle A, okay, because I'm just looking for the value of cosecant. Remember, cosecant is the reciprocal of sine, so that is hypotenuse over opposite. So I need to solve for this hypotenuse. Solving for that hypotenuse. We get 5 squared plus 3 squared equals our hypotenuse, which is c squared. 25 plus 9. So therefore, that is equal to 34. Careful on that one. I had to think about that one. So therefore, c is equal to root 34. So I'm looking 
for cosecant, which is hypotenuse, which is root 34. I just solved for that using our Pythagorean theorem over the opposite side, which is 5. Okay, special right triangles. Make sure you memorize these, and these should be a review from geometry. For your 45, 45, 90, this is 1, 1, root 2. Or you can think about it as that's 1 times x, 1 times x, and whatever these sides are, x times root 2. For a 30, 60, 90 triangle, it's as easy as 1, 2, root 3. Now the largest of these three numbers is 2. That goes on our longest side, which is our hypotenuse. Between 1 and root 3, 1 is the smallest, so that goes opposite the smallest, which is our 30 degree side, and 60 is our root 3 side. So you could think of this as x, the hypotenuse is twice the smaller leg. The longer leg, the side opposite the 60 degree angle, is x times root 3. Okay, so now finding this side. We know we're given the hypotenuse, and you have to recognize it's a 30, 60, 90 triangle. So this is 2, this side is 1, this side is root 3. So the hypotenuse is twice whatever our shorter leg is. So that's why x is equal to 7.5. If I was looking for the side opposite the 60 degree angle, that would be 7.5 root 3. Solving for x in this triangle. Remember, these are 1, 1, root 2. So you could set up a proportion. 12 is to root 2 as x is to 1. All I did is set up proportions for similar triangles. All 45, 45, 90 triangles are similar because of angle, angle. So therefore, I know that these sides are all going to be in the same proportion. So I set up my proportion. So x is equal to 12 over root 2. I need to simplify my radical, so I multiply by root 2 over root 2. That gets me 12 root 2 over 2. 12 over 2 cancels to be 6 root 2. So find the measures of the angles for the triangle below. Okay, so I need to find this theta. So think about what you're given. You're given opposite over adjacent. So I know that the tangent of theta is opposite over adjacent. So how do we solve for the angle theta? Theta is equal to inverse tangent of 3 over 6. So how you get inverse tangent in your calculator? Inverse tangent, you press second and the tan button. That should bring up your inverse tangent. And then you type in your ratio, press enter, and you should get 26.57 degrees. Okay, some applications. We are flying a kite four feet above the ground using 300 feet of line. With a wind speed of 40 miles per hour, the angle of the kite line makes with the ground is 29 degrees. How high is the kite flying? So we have our ground. We have a person. If 
flying a kite. Okay, so we have our person flying our kite. We have, in our picture, 300 feet of line. So this right here is our 300 feet of line. The angle that this, if I were to extend this forever, the angle that it makes with the ground down here is 29. If you draw a little line parallel to our ground, that's also 29 because those are corresponding angles. I want to know how high the kite is flying. I want to know essentially that whole distance there. Let's make that be H, realizing that I'm four feet above the ground, so I'm going to eventually have to add four to it. So I'm looking for this H, which is from here up to our kite. Opposite over hypotenuse. So the sine of 29 is equal to h over 300. Multiply both sides by 300. So this is now just a matter of typing this in your calculator. I get 145.44. Now I add 4 to that. When I add 4 to that, I get 149.44 feet. Now notice what part I didn't use. I didn't use the miles per hour. That didn't affect my problem at all. That was extra information they gave me that I didn't need. Okay, next one. An airplane is flying at 200 feet, is, landing, is headed towards an airport. The airport's landing system sends radar signals from the runway to the airport at an angle of 5 degrees angle of elevation. How many miles measured along the ground is the airplane from the runway? So angle of depression, angle of elevation. So if you think about it, our airport is here. We have an airplane. Don't make fun of my airplane. They always look the same. I can't draw an airplane. So from our ground, the angle of elevation to our airplane looking up is 5 degrees. Okay, our airplane is flying at 20,000 feet. How many miles measured along the ground? I'm looking for X. So opposite over adjacent. <coughs> That's tangent. A 5 is opposite over adjacent. I multiply both sides by X, so I get X times the tangent of 5 equals 20,000. I divide by tangent, so in my calculator I type in 20,000 divided by tangent 5. I don't use inverse tangent, I just do divided by tangent. And I get 20, that. Now this is in feet, since this value is in feet. I need to divide by the amount of feet in miles because it says how many miles. So 5,280 feet are in a mile, and I get 43.3 miles. Okay, there are your two lesson questions, or I'm sorry, three lesson questions for the day. Please make sure those are submitted on time.